Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are having a good day and have had a good week here at the OpenStack Summit this week. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, I don't know, is this the last session of the summit or is there one more after this one? Okay, so there's me and one other person in between you and freedom. So I will do my best to make sure that we give you useful information and that way you not inclined to go ahead and leave. How many people are leaving to go home internationally perhaps tonight? Anybody flying home? A few here and there? Okay. Well, we wish you safe travels and thank you for, for joining us. My name is Scott Lowe. I work for uh, VMware in the Network and Security Business Unit and uh, that is the team that is responsible for creating VMware NSX. And uh, we're going to take a few minutes this afternoon and talk about deploying NSX with OpenStack. Before we um, get started, let's... There we go. Make sure my thing works. Before we get started, just a couple of things. Feel free to ask questions um, throughout the session. You're more than welcome. Um, if, I, if I say something and you don't understand and you'd like some additional information or some additional clarification, please feel free to ask a question. The session is being recorded. So ideally, we'd love for you to get up and go to the mic and ask your question, but um, if you can get my attention past these very bright lights, um, then I'll repeat the question uh, so that the recording gets it and everybody else in the room can hear it as well. But I may need you to speak up if you don't go to the microphone. Um, you're more than welcome to take pictures or um, post tweets or updates or whatever. Um, we do ask that you try to minimize whatever noise your mobile device makes um, so, you know, turn the volume down on the little picture taking sound um, so that other people don't, uh, don't get uh, in interrupted during the session um, and turn off your know, ringtones and that sort of thing, just out of courtesy um, to everyone who's here. Okay, so a quick look at what, uh, who I am and why I'm up here, and then we'll take a look at what we're going to talk about. So, um, I am uh, a longtime veteran in the IT industry. I've been working in the IT field for uh, over 20 years. Uh, I am a blogger. I write a lot on, on my own website, uh, blog.scottlow.org, and you've probably visited there at some point. Um, I've been writing for about 10 years uh, on that site. Um, I have had the opportunity to publish a number of books, and um, so you may be familiar with uh, Mastering VMware vSphere. Um, that was a book that I wrote um, last year. I was uh, very honored to be able to participate in a book sprint um, when we produced uh, along with a number of other individuals, uh, we produced for the OpenStack community the OpenStack Architecture Design Guide, which is available in PDF form off the OpenStack.org website, or you can read it online in HTML form uh, on the uh, OpenStack website as well. Um, my current focus at VMware is on um, uh, open source um, projects. Uh, I do a lot of work with the Open vSwitch project, Open Virtual Network, um, Docker, um, OpenStack, naturally, I'm here. So open source, cloud computing, um, networking, and virtualization. And just to show that I am truly a geek, I do run OpenStack at home. Uh, anybody else out there running OpenStack at home? A few, okay. Yeah, so you know how it is. Um, uh, my kids are asking me to spin up Minecraft servers for them. So I, I tell them to go log into the OpenStack cloud and spin up their Minecraft server. All right, um, our agenda. Uh, I'll provide, for those of you that aren't familiar with NSX, first a quick overview of VMware NSX. Um, very high level, but if you are interested in more detail, then you can see me after the session, and I'll be happy to talk with you and answer any questions you may have and go over any of the elements in, in more detail, but I don't want to um, bore everyone, uh, we'll, so we'll start with a high level view. Um, then I want to look at um, some of the means or the channels that you can use to deploy NSX in your OpenStack environment. Um, I'll provide some examples of some customer deployments using um, these various channels, right? Um, I, ha I was asked um, to remove customer-specific information, so I have to be very um, kind of generic about uh, the customers, but I'll give you uh, what information I can share. Um, and then perhaps uh, the most exciting part, at least for me and hopefully for you as well, I'm going to talk about um, some of the future uh, things that we're going to be adding in a future release of OpenStack. And um, I've been told that um, this is one of the first times publicly 
that we will be talking about um, these features that we're planning on adding to OpenStack. So you guys are among the very first to publicly hear about some of these features that we have planned. And um, uh, I have a section for Q&A or questions and answers here at the end, but as I mentioned earlier, you are more than welcome to ask questions at any time. Don't worry about interrupting me. Um, you are more than welcome to just stick your hand up or, you know, get my attention in some fashion and ask your question. So let's start with a quick overview of uh, VMware NSX as a way uh, by upraised hand. How many people are in here familiar with the NSX architecture? I'm gonna block the, the light so I can see. Okay, a fair number of you, okay. Um, so, so we still have a, a pretty fair number of folks who are not familiar with it, and therefore I think this will be helpful. Um, so um, what is uh, VMware NSX? It is a network virtualization solution. We leverage a network overlay. So what we are doing is we are focused on creating a solution whereby you can create uh, logical networks that are decoupled from the underlying physical network fabric using a network overlay. This um, overlay uh, mechanism and the software and orchestration that's wrapped around that as part of NSX allows you then to create and, and put into effect distributed L2 and distributed L3 across all the hypervisors in the system. So you'll get distributed layer two uh, switching and distributed layer three routing. Uh, and that, that functionality is distributed across all the hypervisors that are involved in OpenStack. So if you have 500 nodes in your OpenStack deployment, then every single one of those 500 nodes will be performing local L2 switching and local L3 routing. It'll all be centrally controlled and centrally orchestrated by NSX. The, the part that does that orchestration, that control is a scale out control plane. Um, so we have a scale out controller cluster that performs the functions of understanding where your instances in the OpenStack uh, cloud are running, on what hypervisor they were turned up, and uh, how to provide connectivity to those instances. It passes that information down using control plane protocols to the hypervisors, and the hypervisors are then responsible for actually doing the work. It's very important to note, although I don't have it noted here on the screen, uh, but just as a, a, a point of reference here, that the control plane is completely out of the, uh, out of the data plane. There is a total isolation and separation between the control plane in NSX and the data plane. And, and hopefully that makes sense. And, and, and as an example of, of doing that, in some cases when you have a central controller or a central controller cluster, the hypervisors end up having to, to forward traffic to the controller um, to understand what needs to be done with it. And so some architectures incur additional latency when they receive a packet, they don't know what to do with that packet, they end up sending it to the controller, the controller has to process it and then send it back. NSX has a complete isolation between the data plane and the control plane, so the hypervisors will never forward traffic to the controllers. We use a proactive method of, of programming the, the hypervisors, so by the time a packet reaches the hypervisor from a VM, the, the rules have already been inserted into the hypervisor to tell it how to, to direct that traffic. And so we don't, we don't ever punt traffic to the controllers, which gives us an improved latency uh, versus solutions that may need to punt um, to the controller. Um, NSX is, is supported in, in multi-hypervisor environments, and um, I'll show you an architecture in a minute that shows it running on uh, Linux hypervisors, right? When you are running NSX in a pure vSphere environment, and perhaps you're using uh, VIO, and there have been a couple sessions prior to mine on VIO this afternoon, so I won't spend a lot of time on VIO. Um, I'll mention it briefly, but I won't go into detail because the previous speakers have already done that for me. But let's say you're running VIO and you're running NSX. Um, that would be a you know, completely vSphere environment. There are additional network services that we can offer in that um, pure vSphere environment when it's running with NSX that we um, today can't offer outside of um, that, that environment. So one of them is, for example, um, a fully distributed and fully stateful firewall where the enforcement of the firewall rules occurs at the VNIC layer on every hypervisor. So just like we distribute all the L2 switching and we distribute all the L3 routing across all the hypervisors in the system, when you're running a pure vSphere environment um, underneath OpenStack, we can offer fully distributed um, uh, firewalling functionality that is also stateful. So L2, L3, L4, um, firewalling, um, also logical load balancing, and when used in conjunction with uh, VIO, you can consume that through uh, the Neutron LBAS uh, project, and also logical VPN 
Um, it's not yet integrated into the VPN as a service efforts uh, from Neutron, but that is something that we are um, actively exploring. So here's sort of a graphical view of what this looks like. This is a really high level view. Um, and, um, you know, I wouldn't take it as, uh, as a technical um, sort of, you know, deep dive architecture. This is more of a, a logical representation of the pieces that come into play. But you can see, um, and I wonder, does this thing have a, oh, it does have a, Laser pointer. Okay, you can see some of the key elements of the architecture that I that I reviewed already. For example, um, when when we're operating in an OpenStack environment, we operate as a core plugin into Neutron, and that core plugin, by the way, is fully upstream. So there's nothing proprietary about that plugin. It is um, developed fully upstream with the rest of uh, the Neutron plugins available um, fully upstream. Runs through all of the uh, existing OpenStack uh, gating and uh, and infrastructure. So when we're running NSX in conjunction with OpenStack, the interface would be the Neutron plugin. So it would be talking API, where you see I have mentioned API access from the cloud management platform. That's where the Neutron plugin is going to be communicating down, taking the requests that are coming into Neutron, which you're submitting via the, you know, the Neutron command line client or some other API client or Horizon, whatever mechanism that might be. It's taking those requests. It's feeding it down to the controller cluster. The controller cluster um, and, um, and uh, also some management plane elements um, that aren't represented here but also are involved will then take that information, pass that down to the hypervisors. Um, in this particular case, uh, I'm, I'm showing open source hypervisors. We're running Open vSwitch, which is a, 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 you're probably all familiar, an open source project, um, Apache licensed, that um, supports programmable networking on Linux hypervisors. And so we will interface with, with OVS and pass down the information. Um, OVS will then use the, the uh, encapsulation protocol, the overlay protocol. There's a number of different protocols that are supported, STT, VXLAN, GRE, um, and also not listed here, but also a new one called Geneve or Geneve, uh, which we are um, developing in conjunction with Red Hat and uh, Microsoft and Intel. But those are the encapsulation protocols that are used on the data plane. That's what allows us to decouple the logical networks from the underlying physical fabric. So when you build your physical fabric, you'll build it for scale. So you'll do full L3 and you know, uh, possibly a spine leaf type of arrangement with a, your L2, L3 boundary at the top of rack and L2 only in the rack and all that kind of stuff. All the sort of things that network engineers really love to be able to design but are often are prevented from doing so because they have to maintain some sort of weird adjacency or connectivity. And then the logical adjacencies, the logical networks are built on top of that scalable L3 fabric. Um, we also offer these, uh, these um, logical to physical gateways. So where your logical networks, which are encapsulated, running one of these encapsulation protocols, need to talk to the outside world, right? Because we all have workloads that need to communicate with other workloads outside of our OpenStack cloud. I don't think any of us is fortunate enough to have everything running inside OpenStack just yet. Right. Um, then we have these gateways, and I'll come back and talk about them more in a moment, but their responsibility is providing both layer three routed access in and out of the logical networks, as well as layer two bridged access in and out of the logical networks. Right. Um, and the APIs for the layer two gateways, if you've been sitting in any of the Neutron related sessions this week, you know that the Neutron project hasn't finished formalizing the the APIs for the layer two stuff. So that is implemented as a, uh, as a API extension uh, supported with NSX, right? So we, we offer that functionality, but um, the, the full Neutron project hasn't formalized how those, those layer two gateways are actually uh, implemented yet, right? But we offer layer two connectivity. So this is really cool because it would allow you to bridge a, uh, a Neutron network uh, with a VLAN outside on your physical network, so they would be the same broadcast domain, right? They would share the same IP address space. It would give you a way to do IP mobility so that you could take a workload and migrate that or, or something of that nature into your OpenStack cloud and maintain its IP address and its connectivity. But we also do layer three routed access, which is far more common. So uh, using Neutron logical routers and, uh, and, and um, uh, NAT uh, or floating IPs, we would uh, be able to provide access to that as well. All right, so that's uh, kind of a, a, a quick overview of the, the architecture. Uh, in terms of kind of adoption and where we are right now, um, Open vSwitch, as I mentioned, is a key part of the NSX architecture. So this is something that uh, an open source project that um, NYSERA launched 
back in 2009, and it has since grown and um, seen a lot of uh, growth. It is a project that uh, VMware still um, heavily invests in, and uh, we recognize that it is the foundation for a lot of the work that's going on in the network space, the network virtualization space. So pretty much almost all of the network virtualization solutions out there on Linux today in some form or fashion will leverage uh, OVS. They may not leverage the OVS data path. They may leverage only the OVS user space, or they may be leveraging both the kernel data path as well as the user space. The, the kernel data path is upstream as part of the Linux kernel. It has been since version 3.3 of the Linux kernel. And we continue to work closely with the Linux kernel community to push features into the Linux uh, kernel um, to support the broader uh, Linux network and community as a whole. Um, so uh, Open vSwitch is important. We continue to invest there. And uh, we have, um, at last count, or at least when this slide was produced, we had 60 different organizations that were contributing code to Open vSwitch. Um, that included uh, contributors from Red Hat, Cisco, VMware, Citrix, and others. Um, and uh, the core committers to, v to Open vSwitch uh, earlier, I think it was last year, um, a gentleman from Red Hat became a core committer. Thomas Graff is a core committer for Open vSwitch. And then just this week, they added Russell Bryant, um, who also uh, um, works at Red Hat. Thomas may actually be at Cisco, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, I forget. But either way, so we've got some core committers that don't work for VMware, which kind of, again, just reinforces the fact that we are doing this in conjunction with the community. It's not something that we're off you know, kind of doing on our own, right? 20% um, of our production deployments of NSX um, currently run under OpenStack. And some of these production deployments, and these are some of the customers um, who have uh, publicly allowed us to refer uh, to them as NSX customers. These are some of these customers who are using NSX in conjunction with OpenStack. Um, and this bottom number just shows that we have some very, very sizable um, deployments of NSX and OpenStack. Um, and in one particular case, we have over 100,000 KVM VMs that are running in a single NSX deployment. So it is scalable. Um, it is seeing traction in the OpenStack community, and it is being developed in the open um, in conjunction with the community. So let's talk about um, how we can deploy um, NSX with OpenStack. What are the ways that you as an OpenStack um, administrator or operator um, or someone who's implementing OpenStack in your environment, how can you deploy OpenStack in your environment? What are the, sort of the, the channels or the ways that we can go about doing that? So um, VMware supports a lot of different uh, ways of consuming um, NSX. Just as you have a lot of choice in consuming how you, um, or, or a lot of choice in, in, in how you consume OpenStack, there's also a lot of choice in how you can choose to deploy op uh, NSX with OpenStack. And so as, as a matter of example, you know, there are um, this, this, this the spectrum of ways to deploy OpenStack in your environment. You may choose to go with sort of the pre-packaged, pre-configured um, route, right? VIO is a good example of that. Um, you, you lose some flexibility, right? Because um, some choices are already made for you. But in return, you get some ease of deployment, ease of maintenance, uh, ease of upgrades um, along that route. And uh, VIO is not the only one. There are other companies out there that offer this sort of, you know, kind of rolled up, pre-done for you OpenStack piece, right? You can also, you know, use the distribution uh, packages that are available. Maybe you're going to go with a partner, say, from a Marantis, for example, or you're going to choose one of the packages that's uh, offered for you through a Linux distribution, a Red Hat, a SUSE, a Canonical, something of that nature, right? This may give you a little more flexibility um, um, in terms of how you deploy it and what you deploy it and some of the configuration settings, but you still um, sort of have a vendor that you can go back to. For example, you know, if you say, hey, I want to deploy OpenStack and I want to, you know, to use Canonical to help me with that, then you can purchase support um, options from Canonical and, and know that you have somebody you can go back um, to if there's an issue, right? And then finally, there's, there's sort of the do-it-yourself, right? I want to I wanna set up my own CI-CD infrastructure. I want to run uh, off of trunk or close to trunk. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it that way. I'm not going to you know, use distribution packages. I'm not going to go through a partner. I'm going I'm, I'm to do it myself, right? And so along the same lines, we have different ways that you can consume NSX, right? You can choose to consume NSX through something like VIO. And again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about VIO. I'll just mention it uh, where it fits in here, but you've already had a couple different sessions here uh, talking about VIO in great detail. 
You can also say, hey, I want to go back and I want to look at some of the partnerships that VMware has announced and formed with others within the OpenStack community, and I want to deploy NSX in conjunction with one of those partners. Um, or finally, you can, you can take it the do-it-yourself route. And all, all three of these routes are perfectly uh, fine. We don't, um, you know, we support all of them. Um, let's look at e uh, these in a little more detail, okay? Um, first, uh, what about, you know, using uh, VIO? This, as I mentioned earlier, sort of the, falls in the prepackaged, pre-configured category, right? There's, there's code already present to help with the integration of NSX. Um, I don't know if the, the VIO guys um, showed you that in one of the previous two sessions, but, you know, when you go to deploy VIO, there's a section that allows you to say, here's the IP address of the, uh, the manager for NSX, and, uh, you know, off you go. And it, and it kind of does everything for you, right? And it walks through its setup scripts, it deploys all the pieces that need to be there, it configures all the pieces that need to be there, and they all talk to each other, and, and off you go. And, and that makes VIO a really great choice if you are an existing vSphere customer. And, um, you know, if you have an existing vSphere infrastructure and you are interested in deploying OpenStack, you know, I would encourage you, really, look at, look at VIO. It's, it's a great, great option. Um, because of the fact that this is a sort of a prepackaged offering, right, and we're doing all the integration work, that means VMware can provide end-to-end -end support for the entire piece. So the hypervisor, the storage platforms, the networking, NSX, OpenStack, all the way through, right? Um, you get some nice features that I'm sure the VIO folks have talked about, you know, really easy upgrades uh, or real easy deployments, uh, real easy upgrades, including a rollback feature, uh, which they added in VIO 2.0, which allows you to, to deploy the new version. And then if you don't like that, you can roll back to the previous version, which is really, really nice. Um, and because we are running in a, in a pure vSphere environment, as I mentioned earlier, there are some things that we can do with NSX when it's only vSphere that we aren't yet able to do in multi-hypervisor environments. So this allows you to take advantage of, for example, the fully stateful firewalling that's available uh, with vSphere or you know, logical load balancing that's integrated into NSX. So that's one route to go down. Um, if you are currently thinking of deploying um, uh, OpenStack, um, I firmly believe that you need a strong network virtualization solution to go with OpenStack. And, uh, you know, v NSX, obviously, we'd, we'd love to have you guys choose NSX, naturally. If you are an existing vSphere customer, I think going down the VIO route is, is a really great way to get started um, very, very rapidly. But there are other op options as well, and we fully support those. So over the last um, couple of years, um, since we have really been um, involving ourselves in, in, in much greater depth with the OpenStack community, we have announced uh, relationships with a lot of different partners in the OpenStack space. Um, so partners like Canonical, where they will package up and include support for vSphere and NSX in their uh, packages, and then their support is coordinated with VMware. So if you buy a support package from Canonical, then they coordinate with VMware support to help you resolve issues, right? So that's one route, for example. Um, uh, we've we've uh, talked about uh, partnerships with Mirantis and their distribution and how, again, their distribution will include support for uh, vSphere and NSX and back-end uh, support coordination. HP is another example. We are in discussions with a number of other partners right now, and all those are customer-driven. So as we have customers come to us and say, hey, we'd like to work with you in conjunction with, let's say, um, Platform 9 or um, you know, SUSE, something like that, then we want to work with those partners and continue to expand our relationship so that that's another avenue for you to deploy OpenStack and NSX. Some of these partners may provide some advanced technical integrations. Some of them may just be that we're going to package it up and we're going to offer you support. Um, and then, like I mentioned, there's a coordination on the back end. So if you have a support package with one of these partners, say a Mirantis or a Canonical, uh, for example, then you can call them for support and then they will coordinate on the back end to help with any uh, resolution of any NSX specific issues. Finally, there is the, the do-it-yourself route, right? Um, uh, we have a number of very, very large customers who choose to go this route, and, uh, and that's fine if you have the existing expertise and or the staff to support this sort of method. Um, most of these are non-vSphere customers, so these are customers who are running very, very large uh, Zen or KVM installations. These customers have the internal expertise. They build OpenStack themselves. They um, might be deploying packages uh, from a distribution, but more often than not, these guys are setting up their own uh, CI, CD. They may actually be active OpenStack contributors, and therefore uh, they have their own CI, CD infrastructure. Um, they are deploying patches into their own production environment as well as submitting them upstream. 
Um, so they are very, very deeply involved in Linux very, or in, and in OpenStack, very, very deeply involved in how this works. So they do it that way. And uh, we support that method as well. In that particular case, you know, we don't support the full OpenStack piece because they're building it and they're, they're supporting it. But we will provide support for, uh, for NSX and the integration of NSX with OpenStack. So we may be submitting uh, patches on the customer's behalf up into Neutron, for example, where we uncover problems in Neutron as a result of the implementation. So that's another route. Um, so you know, the whole range of options are, are open to you as you are looking at deploying OpenStack. Um, if you want to go the route of a prepackaged um, appliance, a pre-configured piece like VIO, that's fine. We can do that. If you want to partner with somebody, um, either from a professional services or intellectual property um, or packaging route, Morantis, a Canonical, an HP, Platform 9, something like that, then we work with those partners as well. And if you have a, a, size and, a sizable enough implementation and or staff and you want to go the full do-it-yourself route, that's fine. We support that as well. So we want to support customer choice in how you consume OpenStack and how you integrate NSX with OpenStack. So let me talk just briefly about a, a few examples of some customer deployments. And again, I did have to, couldn't, couldn't name these customers by name um, necessarily, um, but we do have a very, very large retailer um, that is going down sort of the prepackaged route. So they've chosen to use VIO um, and underneath VIO, they're running vSphere and then they're running NSX. Um, they're using this VIO vSphere NSX environment to run their uh, web presence in production. Um, so this is um, a very well-known brand name that is running their entire web presence on VIO and vSphere and NSX. Um, they're currently running around 5,000 VMs on this installation, all um, managed by OpenStack uh, VIO, all running on vSphere, and the networking and security all provided by um, NSX. Um, they anticipate growing, obviously, um, they're seeing a lot of success in their business, and so we'll probably see this grow by about, uh, I'd say, 20% over the next year or so. That's kind of what they're anticipating. Um, we have a couple of different um, financial institutions that are, are working with us. These guys are at different stages of, of deployment, so one of them is very, very early in, in a POC, but has already committed to a particular partner. Um, we're working closely with Marantis um, on this opportunity. And um, so they're using Morantis OpenStack and uh, be leveraging NSX uh, with that. Um, so they're a little earlier in their deployment. Um, we have some other uh, larger financial institutions that are farther along, but also partnering um, a couple different opportunities there with HP, um, with our Helion group, and, um, and uh, some others. And then um, as an example of the kind of do-it-yourself route, we have a couple of different um, options there, but we have one uh, service provider. This is a full uh, DIY um, sort of installation. They are in full production. This is um, NSX with uh, Zen server uh, running underneath OpenStack. Uh, so it's a very, very large non vSphere environment and they're leveraging a, a whole set of tools, um, open source tools in conjunction with uh, their Linux hypervisors and NSX uh, to provide uh, services to their, to their customers. Um, so this kind of, you know, some examples across a variety of uh, vert uh, industry verticals and uh, examples of uh, the different sorts of ways that customers are choosing to consume uh, OpenStack and NSX in conjunction with each other. All right, so before I move forward with um, sort of a look at some of the future uh, features we're gonna be adding, are there, are there any questions that um, you guys have for me? Yes? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again? Multi-hypervisor environment, right? Um, so uh, that's fine, yeah, don't worry about that. So the question was around multi-hypervisor. Um, was there a specific uh, question? I mean, I've been talking at both points about you know, how we fully support KVM and Zen. I give you examples of customers who have deployed that. We also have customers who are running only vSphere. Um, I don't, not immediately running with customers who are running a, a mixed hypervisor environment. We run an internal cloud that runs both vSphere and KVM. Uh, last time I checked, we were somewhere around 300 hypervisors, both KVM and vSphere running under NSX and being managed by OpenStack. Um, but the operational challenges of running a, a, a mixed hypervisor environment, often customers will choose not to go down the route. Mul maintaining um, multiple images for the hypervisors, uh, maintaining metadata and glance to know which image goes to which hypervisors, that kind of stuff creates a lot of op operational challenges. But uh, the, the idea of running a mixed hypervisor environment uh, something that you can certainly do with, uh, with NSX. Does that help? Great, great. Other questions before we move on? 
going to shield there so I can see if anybody's hand is up. Okay, great. All right. Um, well, if you, if you, again, if you do have any questions or if you want any additional information, if I'm able to provide additional information, I'll be happy to do that. Just catch me afterwards. And um, I also have my contact information on the last slide. You're more than welcome to email me um, uh, or hit me on Twitter, whatever works for you. Okay. So let's talk about some of the things that we have planned for a future release of NSX. Now, um, everything that I'm, I'm saying here is committed to a future release, but we haven't provided any dates on when this future release is going to hit, right? So, um, you know, you can't go back to your boss and say, but Scott promised that it would be here at this time because I'm not promising you that, okay? Um, we anticipate um, availability for this release early next year, um, but uh, again, you know, there's the whole sort of, you know, lots of things may change between now and then, right? Uh, but these are the features that we are currently projecting to be able to deliver in that future release. Um, I'm going to list them first, and then we'll talk in more detail about, uh, about each of the features. So um, the first thing up, what we're going to do is we're going we're to work on improving our multi-hypervisor support. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little more detail in just a moment. Um, it, it's, it's not really sort of, I, I've talked about it some here, it's not really a secret that um, you know, there are some things we can do when uh, we have a pure vSphere environment and NSX that we can't do when we start putting in our other hypervisors, right? I talked about the distributed firewall, for example. Um, and so one of the things that we are really shooting for in this upcoming release is improving that multi-hypervisor support and bringing additional parity to what we're able to do um, to non-vSphere environments. So that's one. Um, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Um, we are also going to be addressing um, some issues in scaling our management plane. Um, our, our control plane is already a scale-out control plane. So we use some advanced clustering mechanisms um, and a... Uh, a, a consensus algorithm. If anybody's interested, it's, it's the Paxos consensus algorithm. Um, you can go look that up on Wikipedia and, and you know, it'll blow your mind on how it works. But um, uh, that uh, is, our, is our, our control cluster, our central control cluster, which is already scale out. Um, but we didn't have a sort of scale out management cluster. And so one of the things we're, we're aiming to provide on um, in this upcoming release will actually be a scale out management cluster. So that will allow you to scale the control plane and the management plane and be able to scale them independently of one another, right? So that if um, you are seeing lots of API requests, then you can scale up the management plane um, without having to also scale up the control plane or vice versa. Um, so that's, uh, that's really cool. Um, we're going to be improving our, our logical to physical connectivity. Um, I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, so we're adding some, some additional options for improved performance on the uh, logical to physical connectivity. And then also we're going to be adding um, dynamic routing support for Neutron logical routers. Um, so this will mean that you can um, create Neutron logical routers and have those Neutron logical routers exchange dynamic routing protocol information with your physical routers so that you can have um, networks in OpenStack that are essentially routable networks and are visible in the routing tables if that's what you wish to do, right? Um, you can do this today with static routes. Um, so we already offer the ability today in NSX to say, here's a, here's a Neutron logical network, and I want this logical network to be passed out to the other network, and I don't want to perform NAT. So in other words, I want to take this address space that is assigned to this logical network, and I want to you know, just represent it out on the, out on the rest of the network. Um, uh, I know I'm, I'm a geek, but I actually do this in one of the logical networks in my own OpenStack lab. So I just have a subnet off of, off of my uh, overall routing table, and that is a neutron logical network. And then what I have to do um, is, is program a route to say that this, this subnet, this route is available through this neutron logical router, right? Um, what this will allow us to do is actually use um, uh, BGP to establish peering relationships between neutron logical routers or um, some sort of entity. It may not be the logical router itself, but a BGP speaker on behalf of the router, um, since routers may come and go, and then have those exchange routing information, right? Um, there is um, an effort. I don't know if any of you saw it. It was a, a session the end of the day, not yesterday, day before yesterday. So today's Thursday. That was Tuesday. There was a session on um, some of the work that's going on in the Neutron community around being able to add BGP routing support. Um, and so that's an area where we'll be working with them to, uh, to kind of standardize that functionality um, as we bring it to NSX. So let me dive into a couple of these in a little more detail. Um, I'll start with uh, the multi-hybridizer support. Uh, so it looks like I'm doing okay on time. So again, I mentioned, you know, there's not really 
a, a big secret that we have these, these differences in functionality between what we can provide in a pure vSphere environment versus what we can provide in a non vSphere environment. And part of that has been because, um, you know, as, as the company who also provides the hypervisor, we can add functionality to the hypervisor perhaps all, sometimes more quickly than we can also add features in open source by working with the community. Now that's not, a, you know, I'm not knocking one or the other. They're just different modes, different ways of, of a development model, right? Each of them has their advantages and their disadvantages. Um, but one of the focuses for this next release of NSX is taking some of these features that we were able to add in vSphere and now um, we've invested um, a lot of time and a lot of effort in making them available in the open source community as well. And one of these examples is a distributed firewall. So this is one that in the next release of, of NSX will be able to give you a distributed firewall, which is a fully stateful firewall, L2 through L4, on KVM, right? Um, not just on vSphere, but also on KVM. And NSX will manage the rules across both hypervisors so that when you do have a mixed hypervisor environment, you can define one set of security policies and that'll apply to wherever the instance lands. Um, what we've done to do this is we worked very, very closely in a number of different communities. One, we worked closely with the OVS community to add features and functionality to Open vSwitch that allow Open vSwitch to integrate with something called the, the connection tracking module in the Linux kernel. Now the connection tracking module in Linux kernel is the same module that IP tables uses. So when you create some IP tables rules that say, hey, I wanna you know, allow this and, and I wanna allow related or established connections, right? I wanna, I wanna maintain state, that's actually being done by the connection tracker um, kernel module. And so what we did is we worked with the OVS community uh, and the OVS um, uh, developers and committers to add extensions to OVS um, and extensions to OpenFlow um, that we hope will eventually make it their way into OpenFlow proper, but in OVS's implementation of OpenFlow, that allow it to integrate with this kernel module. And then we also worked with the Linux kernel community to uh, update the Open vSwitch kernel module, um, which is part of the Linux kernel, to support that stuff from the OVS piece. And so um, this all got merged up. It's already upstream in the Linux kernel. It's going to be part of the 4.3 kernel. Um, that will be officially released. And so in the 4.3 kernel, there will be support in the uh, OVS kernel module to do connection tracker based rules in OVS, which means you can write rules for OVS that will allow it to leverage the connection tracking um, state that is maintained by that kernel module and then be able to say, you know, look, allow in port 22 and, and related or established connections, for example, right? Where we're actually maintaining and tracking the state of connections inbound and outbound through the firewall. Um, this is the same thing, by the way, that, that IP tables does. But what this allows us to do is to bring it to OVS. Um, and, um, and so the reality is, because this is being done in OVS, anybody who leverages OVS actually gets this functionality, right? Um, which is, uh, we, we believe it's necessary. It's an important part of what the community as a whole needs. Um, but it will uh, also find its way um, into uh, NSX. So we're real excited about that. Um, and that's, uh, that's a big feature. Um, one of the other things in terms of improving our, our multi-hypervisor support is that there is an OVS port that is currently underway to Hyper-V. We're working closely with a company called Cloudbase Solutions. Um, they're based in Italy, and they've been working very, very closely on, on bringing Windows into OpenStack, uh, which is, you know, predominantly sort of a Linux story, right? And so they've built tools like a Cloud Init uh, piece for Windows, which allows you to use Cloud Init and uh, the instance metadata to customize a Windows instance, which is very cool. Um, but the other thing that they've been working on as part of the OVS community is actually porting Open vSwitch to run on Hyper-V. Um, they've already released a beta of that. Um, it comes with, you know, the full graphical installer where you, you click next, next, next on a Windows machine, it installs OVS, and then you get a set of command line tools to configure it. Um, and um, once that kind of is fully baked and fully ready, then this will give us an avenue to be able to bring Hyper-V support in for NSX, right? Um, this, isn't, uh, this isn't kind of fully committed yet because we're still working through the OVS port, um, but we are um, uh, looking forward at that um, as, as something that we want to do. So any, any questions about this before I move on? Don't worry about the microphone, it's okay. I'll, I'll repeat the question. Okay, great. So, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about here is um, the high performance logical to physical connectivity. So I, I mentioned earlier that we, NSX offers these gateways, 
that provide these logical to physical connectivity, right? So they sit at the edge of your logical network on the, or the edge of the physical network, right? Where this edge between where your OpenStack cloud sits and where the rest of your stuff sits, whether it be virtualized on, on traditional hypervisors, whether it be bare metal, whether it be whatever, right? They sit at the edge and they're responsible for taking the overlay network that is used by NSX using an encapsulation protocol, unwrapping that and putting it onto the physical network and then taking traffic from the physical network and then determining where that traffic needs to go, to, you know, to which tenant does that traffic belong and then passing it on into the, into the cloud. And um, in our current solution, uh, you know, we offered um, a couple of different options. So when you're running in a, in a non vSphere environment, you could, you could run these things bare metal. So we would give you code that you would install directly onto a server and it would run right on the, on the metal. So no hypervisor required. And that would create a gateway out of that, out of that server. And it would start acting as your, as your device. And then we had some logical abstractions on top of that where, um, you know, you would host multiple logical routers on that. And then we had failure zones and all kinds of stuff to make sure that this is all redundant and scale out. Right. If you're running in a pure vSphere environment, we, we only gave you the option to run it as a VM. And, and NSX sort of spins up that VM and it manages that VM and it deploys the VM for you and, and that's it. And what we're, what we're really excited about being able to do is in the next release actually give you both options on either side, right? In other words, regardless of whether you're running in a non vSphere environment or in a vSphere environment or in a mixed hypervisor environment, you'll have your choice of being able to deploy these gateways as physical workloads, right? Or as virtual machines or as a mix, right? So you'll be able to say, you know, hey, look, I, I might have some, some customers that really, really need extremely high performance. I want to stick 40 gig NICs in these guys, for example, right? Um, maybe that's a, a use case where you need a, a bare metal gateway, right? Um, you may have other, other use cases or other customers, other consumers where that throughput isn't quite as necessary and say, okay, you know, hey, 10 gig connectivity is fine um, or multi gig connectivity is fine. Let's deploy this as, as a VM. Um, or as a cluster of VMs, that's fine, right? So both form factors are gonna be supported. Regardless of which form factor you choose, what we'll be incorporating is support for something called the Intel Data Plane Development Kit, or DPDK. This is a, a, a hardware offload mechanism that was developed by Intel that allows you to offload a lot of the packet processing that occurs onto the underlying CPU. Um, and this gives us very, very high performance even when it's at very small packet size. Small packet size is kind of the, the Achilles heel for software switching, right? And if you know, it's one thing to say, I got a 1500 byte packet, but it's another thing entirely when you're looking at 64 byte packets, right? Um, now, in an OpenStack environment, you're primarily gonna be looking at 1500 byte packets, right? Maybe 9,000 because you went jumbo frames. Um, so DPDK will offer some, some great performance benefits. It's when um, you take that sort of stuff and use it in more of an NFV oriented um, environment where those smaller packet sizes are far more prevalent that you'll really begin to see some huge performance improvements. The other thing is you'll be able to do is use ECMP. And what this means is you'll be able to take a, a cluster of these uh, gateways and create active, active, active uplinks out to your physical network, right? Um, and then assuming, and this is the caveat with ECMP, like ECMP is not the the freebie that a lot of people describe it to be, but assuming that your packet, your traffic distribution allows you to leverage all of those uplinks um, equally, then you'd be able to, to be able to um, pass multiple 10 gig um, interfaces worth of traffic in and out of the network um, at line rate. Um, we've, we've talked about doing like up to eight links. Um, so 80 gigs of throughput um, in and out of these logical gateways, which is pretty significant, right? Um, now, again, I made the caveat that it depends on your traffic flows, right? One to one traffic flows, like one instance in your cloud talking to one server outside your cloud, it's not going to do it. ECMP is not going to do anything for it. Any vendor that tells you that ECMP is going to fix that is off their rocker, <laughs> okay? Um, because ECMP only takes, only helps when you have multiple traffic flows. That's just how it is. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it does provide a great way of scaling up the traffic when you have multiple instances on your logical network that are exchanging traffic with multiple endpoints outside the logical network. So any sort of many to one, one to many, or many to many traffic flows will all benefit from ECMP. All traffic flows, one to one, as well as many to many or many to one, will benefit from the enhanced hardware offload that DPDK will, will be able to provide. So this is uh, some of the stuff that we're talking about, which I think is, uh, is pretty cool. 
All right, so that's really all that I have. Um, I'll be happy to address any questions that you may have at this point, and um, you know, feel free to stick your hand up or catch me afterwards. And since you guys know that we're asking questions, I don't need to leave that slide up. Here's my contact information. You're more than welcome to contact me if you would like. Um, I do travel a lot. I'm based in the States, and I'm here in uh, Japan this week and in New York City next week and in California the week after that. So it may take me a few days to respond to you, but I will get back to you. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, but otherwise, I will uh, go ahead and, lies and let you guys get out of here, move on to your next session. Um, I'll stick around for a few minutes off to the side here. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to address those. Thank you very much for your time.